Welcome to Lecture Online. In this video, we're going to talk about the direction of vectors, and in particular, the direction cosines, which is really the way in which we can express the direction of vectors. Let's take a simple example in the xy plane. Here's the vector a. Let's say that there's an angle between the vector a and the x-axis. Let's call it angle a. Then we, when we project the vector a onto the x-axis, this then becomes that length of that projection, and if we draw this as, as a vector, this then becomes the x component of the vector a. Notice that if we take the magnitude of that x component, this would be the magnitude of the projection of the vector a onto the x-axis. We can then also say that that magnitude, that length right here, is equal to the length of the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of the angle. The direction cosine then is defined as the cosine of that angle. That then becomes a direction cosine, which is a means of determining the direction of the vector relative to the x-axis. We use the letters alpha, beta, and gamma to define the three direction cosines. So relative to the x-axis, we use the Greek letter alpha, and that then would be equal to the cosine of the angle between the vector and the x-axis, and that can then be defined as the magnitude of the x component divided by the magnitude of the vector. In this case, of course, that would be a sub x times the square root of a sub x squared plus a sub y squared in a two-dimensional world or situation. In three dimensions, it makes a little bit more sense, and we use it quite often. Let's say here that we have a vector a that points somewhere in the xyz uh, volume. Notice that we have three angles. The first angle, angle A, which is the angle between the vector A and the x-axis. Angle B is the angle between the A vector and the y-axis. And angle C is the angle between the vector A and the z-axis. We then know that the cosine square of A plus the cosine square of B plus the cosine square of C has to add up to 1. Direction cosines are then defined as alpha is the cosine of A, beta is the cosine of B, and gamma is the cosine of C, and they can be found by taking the magnitude of the x component of vector A divided by the magnitude of A. The cosine of B is, by definition, the magnitude of the y component of the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector, and the cosine of C, the third direction cosine gamma, is equal to the magnitude of the z component of the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. If we now want to define a unit vector in the direction of A, in the direction of the vector A, we can do that using the direction cosines. The unit vector can be, then be defined as alpha. Alpha now will be, again, is the cosine of the angle between the vector and the x-axis, which can be defined by a sub x over a, the magnitude of the x component divided by the magnitude of the vector, times the x direction, plus beta, which is the direction cosine relative to the y-axis, times the y direction plus gamma, the direction cosine relative to the z-axis, times the z direction. Another way, of course, of writing it would be that the unit vector is the cosine of A times the x direction plus the cosine of B times the y direction plus the cosine of C times the z direction. Again, it's another form of the direction cosine, and ultimately, we can define the unit vector as being the vector A divided by its magnitude. But this is an important concept. We can always easily find the direction of any vector when we express it in terms of the direction cosines. And that's why we use those direction cosines. To find the direction cosines, you need to know the angle between the vector and the x-axis, the vector and the y-axis, and the vector and the z-axis. If you don't know yet, or you can't remember how to find those angles, we'll show you in the future videos here how to actually do that. But at least at this point, you have the concept of the direction of a vector and the direction cosines, and this is how it's done. 